Imagine helping build a universe. Not just a planet, but a place where heroes, villains, gods and ordinary people collide in tales of epic proportions. Now imagine that that world is unfolding right on your screen. Over a decade, across dozens of movies and shows, all connected. That's the universe Kevin Feige built. Today we're diving into the mind behind the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And we're exploring how Kevin Feige took Marvel from a struggling comic book company Marvel Entertainment fell three and a quarter today, closing at 49 and a half to a global phenomenon. With the help of some industry analysts, we calculated its current value to Disney and we estimate it's worth about $50 billion. Changing the way we think about movies, storytelling and fandom forever. Stay with us as we unpack Feige's journey. Before Kevin Feige became Marvel's president, he was a young producer working his craft under the tutelage of Richard and Lauren Donner, eventually getting his break on the first X-Men film in 2000 with Lauren when he was associate producer. At the time, Marvel was in a tough spot, at one point reportedly over a quarter of a billion dollars in debt. To stave off the walls, it had licensed its characters out to studios just to keep afloat. Following the success of X-Men, Kevin was invited by Avi Arad, the head of Marvel Entertainment at the time, to help him oversee Marvel IP across the various studios. The idea would be that Kevin would visit sets and try and keep the films in line with the graphic novels. But the problem was that Marvel had kind of sold the rights, so they didn't really have a voice in these productions. Kevin thought there must be a better way of doing this. And that's when he had the idea to bring Marvel's characters under one unified film universe. For Feige, the connections between characters, just like in the comic books, were the core of Marvel's appeal. So instead of licensing IP out, Marvel would now make its own films with its own IP. It was a radical idea, and with the fact that Fantastic Four, Spider-Man and Hulk, to name a few, had all been licensed out, the question was, what was left? With Feige famously saying, A lot of people said, well, without uh, the X-Men or uh, Spider-Man or the Fantastic Four, what is Marvel left with? And I would always think, we're left with everything else. Feige knew he needed just one movie to prove that it could all work. And that movie? That movie was Iron Man. Feige and Marvel financed the film independently, bringing in the relatively unknown Jon Favreau to direct and Robert Downey Jr. to play Tony Stark. Casting Robert Downey Jr. was controversial, having gone through drug treatment programs and spending time in county jail. But Feige knew that Downey was perfect for Iron Man and that he could anchor the universe he envisaged together. Straight out of the comic books, with the latest CGI technology, Tony Stark flew into our movie theaters. Iron Man was a hit, but Feige didn't stop there. At the end of the film, he dropped a game-changing post credit scene, featuring Samuel L. Jackson as Nick Fury, introducing the Avengers Initiative. And while very much a gamble, the Marvel Cinematic Universe was launched. In that moment, fans realized something groundbreaking. These weren't just separate movies, they were all part of a connected universe. And they weren't the only ones that noticed. After just one film, Disney moved in and bought Marvel. And by 2012, when the first Avengers film released, it brought together characters from previous solo films into one unified storyline. Hulk, Iron Man, Hawkeye, Thor, Black Widow and Captain America all fighting together to save Earth. Feige's vision of a connected universe had paid off in a big way and audiences were hooked. Avengers being the first of the Marvel films to make over $1 billion in box office and that was just in the first three weeks of opening. With this success and with the financial support of Disney, Marvel had the ability to bring some of its licensed characters back into the fold. Sony Pictures was persuaded to allow Spider-Man to be both in the MCU as well as in their own standalone films. But it hasn't been all roses. The desire to make more and more has come at a cost. Recent films haven't had the reviews or revenue from past films and expanding into streaming through Disney Plus has also led to further problems. 
And the issue for many has been the very thing that was its initial superpower. The idea of an interconnected universe that allows depth and growth of characters and plots is huge. However, as these plots roll into being over a decade long, including 12 movies, three TV series, casual viewers have become bewildered by the offer. Alongside this, there was a split within the viewers. For the original MCU diehards, we all went to the cinema to watch our heroes. It was this experience that was part of the thrill, a shared one where we saw people across many years. We became friends. With Disney Plus now having the TV and all the films on the platform, this experience has now been diluted. We can watch when and where we want. And for me at least, this is where I kind of lost any idea as to what was happening. And most importantly, I stopped caring. Time will tell whether Kevin can make his magic again and make the MCU soar once more. But what do you think? What has your favorite MCU film been? Do let us know in the comments. Please do consider subscribing. It really helps us get the videos out to more people. Thanks again for watching. We make videos nearly every week about trends, culture, design. Until next time, stay curious and see you in the next one.